Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluter channel. Today, guys, I'm doing paid review. This is paid review 20 SE88. This is for Richard. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Quick, 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 quick. Wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Jager Lacoutre Reverso Grand Date. Hi, Paul. You have previously done a collection review for me a while ago. I've been following the Pontus advice and modifying my collection and would like your opinion of where it is now. First, I have a Patek Philippe 3566 gold watch with a Lapas Lazul face. Lapas Lazuli face. This watch I bought for my lovely wife. We've been together for 20 years now. Both second marriage and she deserves it. I paid 5-5 five five back then. I also gave her a Rolex date just uh, with quick set date and acrylic crystal. No picture of the Rolex. Next, I have a Jega Lacoutre Reverso Memory in Gold and Steel. This is my dress watch. Bought online at an auction for four and a half thousand with four with full box of papers. <clears throat> it's a unisex watch that when I first bought it seemed a little small for my seven and a half inch wrist. However, after wearing it for a while, I really grew to love the smaller size. I love it and wear it when I have to dress up or feel the call to wear it. Next in September 2020, I bought a Rolex Hulk and was able to purchase from an AD at list price. I have the box and papers with the new warranty card that doesn't have a name on it. The only reason I was able to get this watch was because a close friend of mine purchases a lot from this AD and asked them to get one for me. I think I will have to be indebted to him for a long time. Definitely. Very, very true. <clears throat> I bought the next Rolex back in 2016 for $5,600. It's a Milgauss Z Blue with box and papers. I absolutely love the dial color and the funky orange cutters and green bezel. Well, green dial, green dial glass. I tend not to wear it that often because of the polished center links on the bracelet. Those links tend to scratch a little way too much. I have always wanted an Explorer 2. <clears throat> when I started to look for one, I really liked the older 40mm 16570 model. I was looking for about two years. When I came across a 165500 for sale for somebody who was asking 6200 This was in 2019. I was able to purchase it for six without box or papers. The bracelet and watch are in really good shape. I know this watch was only made for a couple of years and hope it increases in value even if it doesn't so what I absolutely love this watch uh, and he's also I've got I bought this Air King 39 mil in 2018 from an AD new with box and papers I realize with this watch you either love it or hate it uh, it's a little odd with the green and yellow accents, but that's why I love it. It's different. The only thing I would have changed on this watch would be to put zero in front of the five. It would be, it would balance out the dial. Not sure why Rolex didn't think of this. I disagree. I think that would be dumb. I think it would be dumb, but okay. I know it's pretty much the same as a Milgauss, but it looks so different than the Milgauss that nobody notices they're so close. Uh, this one, he's got another, he's got, what's he got? This one is a Zenith Chronomeister El Primero 1969 two-tone with grey dial. I bought it from Joma Shop for 4540 with box and instruction book, warranty locators, but no warranty card. I have always wanted a column wheel chronograph with the high frequency and second hand moves so smoothly. I have both the leather band and the stainless steel bracelet. The little thing Zenith does with detail is amazing. I don't know why they don't go for more money. Uh, when I was little, I always wanted a Breitling, so I, as I got older, I finally purchased a used Navi Timer, reference A23322 A with the Valjou movement with box and papers in 2014 for 3500 I just had this watch serviced last month. I used to wear this watch quite often, but now not so much. I really don't think the Valjou comes anywhere close to the Zenith, just from the pushes 
and the reset of the hands. What a difference between the two, but it's a beautiful watch. I really wanted a world time when Breitling came out with the Galactic, Galactic Uni Time Sleek T World Time watch with the new B01 movement. I had to look at it. I must admit I was impressed uh, at the watch for the price. I do wear this watch quite often. I purchased this watch from Joma Shop for $27.50, 2750 with box and papers with the steel bracelet and the black leather band and white dial. The watch doesn't seem to be that popular, but it doesn't seem to matter to me. Uh, my last watch is a Ulysses Narden, Ulysses Narden Maxi Marine Chronometer. Uh, 43 mil with ETA movement in 2016 for 3600 with box and papers, steel bracelet and rubber strap. I really like the fact they put the Cyclops under the crystal so there isn't any lump any lump like the Rolex I know you're not keen on Ulysses Narden I bought this watch on a whim on a vacation uh, he goes on to say I do wear it and think it's a nice watch but now that Ulysses Narden has in-house movements I just feel a little weird with it anyway I'm looking to possibly downsize the collection and make some changes which direction do you think I should go which watches do you think I should sell and what should I add? I think I would like to downsize to about four to five watches. I'm not sure of the JLC size. Should I get a Grand instead of the midsize Uni 6? I do have beta watches I wear every day when I'm working or doing manual things and I'm not worried about those. Thank you so much for your help. Please don't let every day living problems get you down you have many many friends out in this world you have never met and are on your side don't worry about the detractors i've sent you a hundred bucks via paypal i hope you have a very 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 merry 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 christmas and a happy new year richard from new jersey so so richard i gotta say well 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 what can i say indeed there what a great collection so for the wife, he's got a, a vintage Patek 3566. Um, and he's got a date just. That's a good choice. That's okay. She's she's done. Now, as for you, we've got the two-tone Jaeger LeCoultre Reverso. i got to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of the JLC two-tones. I think you either go steel or you go solid. But, you know, it's it's... It is still, it's still got some merits there. I wouldn't quite discount it yet. You got a Hulk. My God. Absolutely tick. Absolutely. That is a keeper. The Hulk. That is one of the hardest watches to get. Very, very wanted. It's in demand. Absolutely. Uh, you're a very lucky guy to have that piece. Um... Then you've got a Milglau Z Blue. I think the Z Blue is probably the best. Okay, I if I had a choice of a Milglau, and I, I actually love the Milglau. I think the Z Blue uh, is absolutely my first choice. That is absolutely the one I would get if I was able to get one because they're very hard to get. Believe you me, they are hard to get. Okay, I don't. I I can tell you that now. They're very hard to get. I just came back from Melbourne, and you can't get them. Uh, the next piece you've got is the 16550. So this watch here, this is a transitional model. So basically, the original Plastic Explorer 2, the original Explorer 2 came out in the early 70s, uh, was the 16560. Five, five. When they went sapphire, the first version became a 16550. So a five digit uh, explorer was a sapphire version. Now, the interesting thing is, the interesting thing is, they did a similar thing with the 1680, the sub, the plastic sub, it became a 16800. Interesting with the GMT, they went five digit, but they retained plastic glass. 
interesting footnote. Um, the 16550, <clears throat> very, very collectible. The interesting thing is they had three dial colors. They had the black and the white, but they also had cream. The cream is the most valuable, but any 16550 is extremely, extremely collectible. So it, 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 that is a fantastic vintage, classic vintage watch to have. You've got the Air King, the new model Air King. I had one myself, absolutely beautiful. So that leaves us too. So what I'm actually gonna say here is, okay, so let, let's just talk about the other pieces you've got. You've got the Zenith, that's actually quite a decent piece. Uh, high beat, high beat Zenith was was one of the first automatic, they, they was a race to come out. Who was first? Uh, was it Seiko? Was it Zenith? Or was it the, uh, the Hoya, the Hoya Monaco? So there were different camps at the time, but I got to be honest with you, probably the Zenith was the best Swiss option. And it's the one Rolex went to, they went to Zenith in 1988 when they went automatic. So it's a great piece. The Breitling, the Breitling Navi Timer, I would say that's a nice piece, beautiful. I actually had, um, I had a, the old Navi Timer 2, which was slightly different layout. It had the date at the three. And I loved it. I really did love it. I loved it. I gotta tell you, your, um, your Galantic Uni Timer, I love it with the painted the the uh, the the world map there. That's actually quite a cool piece, okay? And the Ulysses Narden, absolutely hate it. So, my advice to you is, if you were downsizing, what would I do? If you want it, so we'll ignore the ladies' watches because you can't sell the wife's watches. So just leave that to one side. But my advice to you would be keep the Rolex do not sell the Rolex do not sell the Rolex I would keep the Hulk I would keep the Z blue and I would keep the Explorer 2 and the Air King those four would be the pieces I would keep I would probably say even the Zenith I would keep what would I ditch possibly the Reverso the two-tone Reverso I'd possibly dump that uh, I would ditch, I would ditch, what else would I ditch? I would ditch the Breitling, okay, the Breitling Navi Timer. And I would possibly, I'll tell you what else I would ditch. I would ditch, I would ditch the Ulysses Narden. And possibly the Breitling Galantic. I would possibly ditch that as well. My advice to you would be to get rid, now I would say, the, now the problem is, let me tell you what the problem is, those ones are also the least valuable. The ones that would have most value would be Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. See, what's happened is Rolex have gone crazy. Everything else, everything else would be a bit hard. So the Reverso, being a bit small, I don't know whether it's worth flipping. If you like it, possibly keep it. Uh, as far as the Hulk, don't sell that. Don't sell the Z Blue. Don't sell the Explorer 2 16550. Don't sell the Air King. Uh, the Zenith, I'd possibly keep that, but you could possibly ditch it if you wanted to. The Breitling, I would ditch. The problem is, so. The Breitling is at CAMS. The 7750 is actually a very nice chronograph. They've been used by so many brands. IWC used 7750. Uh, Hamilton used it. And many expensive brands. Breitling used it too. <coughs> it doesn't compare to the Zenith. The Zenith is a much better. It's a column wheel chronograph, high beat. It walks all over the... Now, as far as durability goes, I'd probably say the Valjoux 7750. It's a great workhorse, but it's not a refined creature that the 
the zenith is. So my advice to you, I'd possibly ditch ditch the Breitlings and I'd ditch the Ulysses Nardens. Now the problem is by ditching those, those are the least desired in the collection. So you're probably not going to get big bucks in. You're not going to get big bucks in. So if that's okay, if you're just culling because you wanted to just focus on the good stuff, get rid of that stuff. But if you needed to raise money, it's the Rolexes that would bring in the coin. Okay, so that's... Now, you're asking the question, should I downsize? I would like... I, I would like... I think I would like to downsize to four or five. I'm not sure... The problem is you sell that JLC and nobody really wants that size. It's more of a lady size, okay? So it's not going to pull big money and then you're going to be paying big money to get a grand size. So it's kind of stuck. Uh, it's You're going to pay to get into a grand reverso there. Um, okay, so you're saying... Um, so my advice to you is I would probably say keep your Rolexes. Rolexes have become exceptionally valuable. But the thing is, they're actually respected. It's not just the value. It's not just the financial thing. The Rolexes are waterproof. They're just so... It's to, to have a Rolex collection for a man these days to have one Rolex, it's become a grail. Prices are crazy. Supply and demand, it is absolute. You've got a beautiful collection. Maybe sell the garbage off. Get rid of those Breitlings, the Ulysses Narden, even the Zenith, get, and the JLC, and enjoy your Rolexes. Those are very, very, very special. Incredibly special. So that's what I do. Now, if you need money... That's another side of the, th the coin. The Rolex is where the bucks are. But you haven't really said to me that's the situation. So I would say ditch the non-Rolex. Simple as that. Ditch it fast. Um, look, I don't know how you're going to sell it. I, the best way to sell it would be to sell it yourself. Go and check out prices. And if you're on a forums, you could, you could just... Put your toes in the water and see how it goes. The problem is the only stuff that's really, really wanted is the Rolex. The Rolex is what's wanted. Everything else is kind of soft. So I'm just telling you this because I don't want you to be disappointed. But yeah, that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So I would seriously say to you, uh, my advice to you would be to keep the Rolex. That's an amazing... Now, it's very hard to get Rolex. Very hard, very hard. So keep the Rolex, ditch the other stuff, and enjoy your pieces. But... Uh, Man, Rolex has become impossible. To get a Hulk, oh, oh, it's hard. To get an Air King, there. I went to Melbourne, I can't get an Air King. I can't get an Air King. I can't get a Milgauss. The watches you've got, you're so fortunate. And even the 16550, that is such a collectible. Some people would go crazy for that piece. So my advice, seriously, I'd keep the Rolex and ditch the garbage. I mean, are they garbage? They're probably not garbage. They're not garbage, but keep the Rolex. That's what I would do and enjoy and savor it. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some comments below. And remember, guys, I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need the paid reviews. To stay on YouTube, I need paid reviews. Without the paid reviews, I would sink. I would sink. I really need the paid reviews. So, um, yeah, that's the way it goes, guys. I will see you in the next one. 
Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.